What's up, X and YouTube? Matt A here. Yeah, this was a hard thing to swallow, right? This is kind of a, a you know, a bittersweet, a, a somber day when we realize, you know, that Game Informer is shutting down. Obviously, I believe GameStop shut them down, of course. And, you know, in all of the in, in defense of GameStop, it is a hard business to run because almost all, you know, a lot of well, a large percentage of games have started, you know, obviously are digital and PC gaming has grown exponentially as long as, you know, along with consoles. And it's just hard. I don't think GameStop is a sustainable business long term. And when you're in the business world, you know, and you're running a company, it's kind of hard to stay relevant with technology when it's evolving faster than you can innovate. You know, when GameStop tried, they, they try selling the digital versions of games, offering, you know, uh, pre-order bonuses and, you know, downloader. They tried to have their own launcher, I think, at one time. And that's the thing. If they if they innovated and predicted the future a long time ago, they could have had something like Steam, right? GameStop could have had their launcher and it could have been a competitor or even equal to Steam at one point. But they didn't see the future or the writing on the wall. And sometimes that happens with big corporations because big corporations are have a board of directors and not everybody sees things properly. And sometimes the CEO doesn't either. So Game Informer is obviously shutting down. Uh, you know, GameStop is a parent company of what will want, once was the most circulated magazines in the US. One of the most circulated magazines, right? And I remember having gaming, gaming, uh, Game Informer growing up. It was one of the most exciting things in the 90s. When you just go to Walmart and your mom's shopping or Kmart, you know, the Sears or whatever, I would go to the magazine section every single time. Every single time that my mom went shopping, I would go to the magazine section and, and read to the end. You, you would get the cheat codes. You would get uh, news about what's coming up because back then there was the Internet, but a lot of kids didn't have it. So kids, kids mostly wanted Game Informer because they got to see, you know, what was coming out. And I do remember that fondly. They had great artwork for the covers, man. Game Informer, I think it was uh, uh, Mega Man X2 game informer and i saved that thing for a long time they had really really good artwork on their covers game informer i think had the best art had, i think they had the best covers out of egm and uh nintendo power was pretty cool but i think game informer pretty much took the cake uh when it came to you know the covers so game informer video games magazine and publication 1991 was ab abruptly closed friday now, this isn't abruptly because, like I said, the board probably knew about this. They discussed this for a long time. It wasn't abruptly for them. It was abruptly for us, right? So GameStop, this ends decades of U.S. print media covering video games. Thanks to ownership and distribution under games retailers. First, the Funko Land chain. I, I, don't need, I kind of remember that. Before that merged with GameStop, right? Before they merged with GameStop. Game Informer had circulation and subscription numbers that embarrassed most traditional print magazines in 2011 the magazine's circulation was about 8 million making it the third log largest magazine in the nation it was home to the most robust feature stories in the game space the staff almost always wielded their extensive access to game companies with the goal to inform and entertain not advertise it was home to compelling investigative and thoughtful pieces true and helped start careers of many in the games media space today including the popular reader funded podcast min max which is composed of former game inform game informer editors and reporters that's what i'm talking about innovating and they part of that company actually split off and birthed the min max podcast right they came from they were former game game informer employees and they spun off and they evolved with the technology so technically, the legacy is continuing on just as a different brand, different company. But you see what I'm saying? So it did. Game Informer did actually innovate. It's just that it became a shell with, under the corporation. Right. But obviously it did lead to MinMax. And that's good. Sometimes when companies are dying, the employees actually form a new company and they innovate in ways that they saw where they saw would be a gap in the market or where they saw, you know, where something could go into in the future. The Washington Post hired away one of their reporters, Elise Favis or Favis, 
to be a founding member of its video game coverage in 2019 and a cherished colleague of mine. That is true. We did see that. We saw some consolidation, right, with Forbes, with Washington Post, with other media outlets. We saw them incorporate gaming because gaming ha has such a large industry now. It's grown exponentially that they incorporated it into bigger news outlets. So places like Forbes and Washington Post, Rolling Stone cover video game coverage. So that's also one way that technology changes and markets changes. Sometimes there's a lot of consolidation, right? So that is something that also happened was the consolidation. And that makes sense. Game Informer, uh, Game Informer, this is what I was talking about. Game Informer cover stood with the best that Time Magazine and New Yorker could conjure. True. Seeing video game characters on glossy cover, yeah, always meant something. Kit Ellis, a former Nintendo of America communication staffer, set on X that its staff pushed video game companies to create more interesting art for its covers. That is true. They had, like I was saying, the best covers. My favorite one was the Mega Man X2. I'm going to see if I can pull that up, actually. You know, the Mega Man X2. So uh, here we go. As someone who was there at issue one and spent most of their life fighting and scratching and clawing for GI Game Informer, it breaks my heart to see it in. Posted former editor, editor Andy McNamara who, like many in the games media, transitioned careers into games industry. Like I said, they transitioned their careers. They used it as a starting point. So it is bittersweet, but it did lead to some awesome things in the uh, gaming community. And let's give props. Let's say RIP to Game Informer. They did give us some of the best covers in gaming. And I'm, I'm going to see if I can find that Mega Man X2 cover. You know, and for, you know, Fortunately, MinMax readers and staff have been scrambling to rescue what they can. See, that's another missed opportunity for GameStop. They could immortalize and digitize every single Game Informer magazine and maybe even sell it as a package, right? If you say, hey, we have the entire catalog of Game Informer from 1991 until now, and we did digitize the whole thing and we're selling it as a digital download as a package that could also be a way to monetize it and keep its legacy or they could at least do it as a courtesy right we don't want to lose these things forever we don't want to lose game informer it's a piece of history it, it, it's historical we want to preserve that and i think it, it seems like that's what min max and readers are trying to do they're trying to preserve some of the issues in magazines right so, you know, you saw that we read that, you know, we all know the news about that. This other stuff is just drama. It's kind of kind of irrelevant. Uh, what we really need to focus on is the Game Informer piece of it. And like I said, it's one of the most fond memories I've had. So I just wanted to pay my respects to Game Informer, kind of give my story, my perspective and my feedback on, you know, how the industry progresses. And though it's bittersweet, take solace in the fact that it spun off and influenced the games industry and kind of went its separate way. It created ways in the gaming industry. And basically what was left of it was just a corporate shell. The heart of Game Informer is still there. The heart of gaming Game Informer lives in all of us. It lives in the people that are that is, you know, that are still in the industry. So I, I, maybe my memory is mistaken. I couldn't find uh, the X2 cover, but I did find another Mega Man cover. And you can see here that this gives you an idea of how good the artwork is for Game Informer. You can see here. I mean, this looks great. The artworks, artwork looks great. And they put a lot of time. And you can see Mega Man looks awesome in this cover. And this, I think this is on eBay. I think it's going for $40. But we see what we're talking about here, right? This was 1993 and none of this stuff is digitized. So it's going to be lost. They could have at least digitized this stuff, man, or went into their files that they have it and digitized it. It's very frustrating. It's very, very frustrating. I'm going to keep looking for some more awesome covers that and see if I can remember some. Let's see. Yeah, dude. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this was a good one, dude. Yeah, this was a good one, man. What was this? 1994, dude. Wow. 
All right, this is another good one, man. It's so simple, but this was Mortal Kombat 2 and then Sonic and Knuckles. Ooh, man, this this is good. This takes me back. This is good. We're going to keep going through some of these, man. I, I, I just can't help it. I want to see some more. I want to see some more covers. I really do. This is great, man. This is great. This is great, dude. Yes. Oh, yes, dude. Yes. Oh, man, this is fucking great. Yeah, here, here's another one, man. Tomb Raider 2. Oh, these are so good. And what stood them out to one of the main things that stood them out and in and, and graphics design, typically a magazine keeps the same format, the same header. These people spend extra time redoing their header for every single magazine cover. They didn't like recycle the same graphics over and over again. And this has been from the 90s on too. It was one of the few. So like if you get New York Magazine or Time Magazine, they typically, you know, have their header the same. It's pretty much always the same. Game Informer changed every single issue, which also made it a beautiful. Wow, look at this, man. It's actually getting hard to find these covers, but I did come across this one for Fallout 3. Yeah, dude, this this was cool too. Yeah. I, I don't think I don't think I can even get this that big anymore. Yeah, I can't even get this like I can't even get a high fidelity version of this. But you could see, man, like I said, every every mag every title, every issue, they change their name. These are so great, man. Ah, oh, man, I, I hope that I hope that that min max can, you know, archive as many of these things as possible. I hope that we can keep as many of them as around as possible. If you have Game Informer magazines or laying around, you know, the covers, please take pictures of them and put them on the Internet and maybe somebody will be able to find them. Right. Leave uh, leave me a uh, comment. Let me know if you have any Game Informer magazines still left over. Take pictures of them, post them. Let me know if you post them on Reddit. That's going to be awesome. I do want to see that. So let's take solace in the fact that the heart of Game Informer lives on. And growing up in the 90s, we have very fond memories of these covers. I mean, these are great, man. These are great. These are so, 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 so. These are so good. So you got to see a few Game Informer covers. And those weren't even all the best ones. There's plenty of more that you can find. I would actually if I, I would recommend Googling them and taking a look at them for yourself, especially if you didn't grow up in the 90s. The heart of Game Informer lives on. Let's take solace. That's the video. Thanks.